Now, everywhere you go on a day-by-day -day basis, people are wearing masks, okay? People are presenting the best possible version of themselves so that they um, aren't getting judged for the bad characteristics or personality traits they have. So it's acceptable in that format, right? However, it can also be very dangerous because some people who are deeply narcissistic, psychotic, um, who are sociopaths, psychopaths, right? These people are socially conditioned to hide certain parts of their personality because they've received negative feedback from it, right? And they therefore hide these parts of their personality and they learn to present themselves in a way that unfortunately for other people is vastly, vastly contradictory to who they really are as a person. Which is why you'll find people who get into relationships with someone or get into a friendship with someone and they'll say, how did that person change so much? How did they go from someone who was loving, empathetic, friendly and social to someone who's so selfish, narcissistic, suddenly independent and just likes to be secluded, okay? And it's because of these masks that people wear. Now, the first thing you need to be able to do in order to see through someone's mask is you need to be doing less and you need to be observing more. Okay, just like with driving, when you first started learning how to drive, it was very hard for you to have a conversation with someone or do something else while you are driving. But when you start driving and you become very fluent with it, it's very easy to drive and have a conversation with someone because it's a robotic task. Similar to reading someone, okay, when you first, when you first start, the more you can just be focused on what they are saying and you're not talking and you're not doing, the easier, is it, the easier it is for you to read them because there is less, there is less capacity, capacity of your brain brain being used up. When a task or a function becomes more robotic, it is more easy for you to multitask, okay? So when you first start trying to read through people's masks, it's very important for you to let them be talking, ask them questions, and as they are talking, you can start seeing through their mask, okay? It's very, it's nearly impossible when you start out to be doing the talking and reading someone, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is it's very, very easy for people to uh, say whatever they want. Guys, I'm a multi-millionaire. I make 500,000 pounds a year. I own three houses. I drive an amazing car, okay? I give to charity every day. You know, I'm a philanthropist. I'm a humanitarian. I'm an activist for animal rights, human rights. Guys, I can say whatever I want to say to people and I can do it with a very straight face, okay? And so can other people. What you need to do in order to actually be able to read someone is stop listening to the words as much. The words mean very little because I've just spewed a whole lot of shit. It's not about the words. What you need to look out for when someone is speaking is their facial expressions. It's very, very hard, even for people who look into human nature and study it, to be aware of their facial expressions because these are natural, subliminal things happening with your face as you speak. And again, e even someone like me who spends hours of my day looking into human nature, I struggle hiding how I really feel about things from time to time. My face gives itself away sometimes. I've learned how to, how to go against that and keep a poker face, but sometimes you can't help it. And the average person on the road is terrible at this. Guys, I've actually been able to find a lot of fake people in my life just through reading their facial expressions, right? And it's quite sad to be honest, but I'll give them good news about something that I've done. Okay, and I can read from their face they're not actually happy about it. And you'll find these, there's people like this in your life, okay? They are embedded into your social circle. Some of them are even embedded into your family, okay? And they want you to do well, but never better than them. Than, than them. Their relationship to you is, is essentially a relationship that's centric around them being in the superior position to you, okay? And if you are doing better than them, they cannot handle it. It makes them uncomfortable because that's not the premise of the relationship they've had with you for a long time. And I've unfortunately had to discover this. I've told certain people, I can think of two people off the top of my head, positive news, and I can read from their face they're not happy about it. People cannot hide this stuff, right? Especially not to someone who looks into this stuff as much as I do. But you don't need to look into this stuff as much as I do to be able to read this, okay? When you're giving someone positive news, guys, it does not take a genius to work out from someone's smile, from someone's eyebrows, from someone's cheekbones, whether the smile is genuine or not.
okay? You'll tend to see a full smile extends a lot more than a fake smile. You, you'll tend to see a full, real, genuine smile will have a lot more involvement with their cheekbones on their jaw than a fake smile, which is just purely the lips and it doesn't extend as much as, as a real smile does. Practice this. Look in the mirror and do a fake smile versus a real smile and you'll notice uh, the, the differences. A real smile, I want you to do by thinking of something that makes you laugh, right? Thinking of something that makes you happy and do a real smile and then do a fake smile and you will see the differences and then observe this in other people, okay? So you'll be able to observe pe through people's facial expressions how they really feel about a situation or how they feel about you in certain circumstances. People's facial expressions are very telling, okay? And also if you're in a group dynamic and someone is talking and someone else is looking at that person talking, by observing how it is that they're looking at the other person talking, you can really tell a lot about the, the relationship they have together, okay? Or how that person observes the one who's talking. You'll be able to tell this stuff. And again, I don't even need to teach you the subtleties. You know human nature. Do you know why you know human nature? Because you're a human. Observe how you do things and you'll be able to tell. Like I do this from time to time too, right? I'll be listening to someone talking or I'll be in a conversation and I'll notice something happening with my face. I'll notice I've moved my cheek a certain way. I'll notice I've, um, you know, expanded my eyes and I'll think to myself, why have I just done that? And then you notice it in other people and it, and, and it draws a parallel, right? So watch people's expressions when you are talking to them and watch people's expressions when someone else is talking to them. It's very telling, okay? Number two, something else that doesn't lie is your voice inflection. When people are sad sometimes, they'll have a voice inflection. You, you know, you'll notice that their voice is very kind of like low. You'll notice that there's a, a downwards inflection at the end of all of their sentences. It's very hard for people to hide this, okay? When someone is trying to pretend like someone they're not or someone trying, trying to pretend they're in a mood that they're not, again, the facial expressions, the voice inflection, and sometimes the eye contact with people who aren't seasoned at lying is very, very giving of how they actually feel or how they actually are as a person. Okay, now the last thing I want to touch on in this video because it's kind of like an introductory into this It's a massively big topic guys. Some people dedicate their entire lives specifically to this topic Okay, um, and I've touched a lot into it But I'm I want to do so much more studying before I do the follow-up videos to this Okay, because I have only probably put in like 50 or 60 hours into this specific topic versus other people who again who have dedicated their whole life to it so I want to study it a lot more before I give you guys a subsequent video to it but the last thing is to focus less on the words as as the previous statement I made but more on people's actions the contradictory the contradictory action to people's words means so much okay so what I mean by this is if I tell people I'm very relaxed I'm very calm you know I never freak out I never get angry at people, okay? And then you one day see me exploding with anger, okay? And you see all this like negativity and toxicity and aggressiveness coming out of me. That is far more telling than the words I said. Again, people can say whatever they want, guys. Stop paying attention to people's words. People's words literally mean absolute shit. Because, and the reason is, is because your words, your words can literally say anything. I could paint a picture that I'm someone I'm not through words, but the actions, especially the unintentional actions of someone, are far more telling. When someone has an explosive um, argument and they let through a side of them that you've not seen before, that's unintentional. That is an unintentional side. When someone does something very erratic, okay, like crying or having an angry outburst, these are unintentional things. Okay, they've not thought to themselves, hey, I'm going to cry now, or hey, I'm going to get angry and bang someone in the face. It doesn't happen like that. So unintentional actions that contradict someone's words are far, far, far more telling of the person's personality than the words itself. Okay, that's the last thing I want you to pay attention to. So remember, observe more, do less. Look at someone's facial expression, their voice inflection and their eye contact. Okay, and number three, look for actions that contradict the words as it's far more telling of someone's personality.